Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dev here and in this video today I'm going to show you how we can create this circulation zone around any type of family that we want. This is going to be really useful when you're designing your spaces just to make sure you hit regs and the best part about this is that it's fully parametric, right? So if I want to go here and I change this from a queen bed to a double bed, you can see it's adapting with the family. Same here for twin and another good thing about this is that we can easily turn it off. It's actually not built in, in the it's built in part of the family but we can control it through the project environment. So if I go to VV here and go to my project and then I go to furniture, I can easily turn off the circulation zone in case I want to show the drawings clean or let's say I want them to be more visible for a specific type of drawing. I can make it red. Let's go here and then also change the line pattern. There we go. So it easily updates. I think it's going to be really useful for you guys. So yeah, let's get into it. Great. So we've started a new project. Now what I want to do is I just want to create a room here just so got an example to follow so let's just do something that's five meters by four meters there we go I'm gonna set this to course and just make sure let's just do it so it's set to level one okay now I want to load in my bed family so I'm gonna go to insert load Autodesk family and over here I'm just gonna write bed up top let's use this one for example uh, let me hit load there we go and then I'm gonna do architecture component and load the bed into my room so now what we have to do is we have to edit the family. So I'm going to click on the family here and go to edit family. And now we're in the family environment. We want to go to the floor plan view, which is the reference level. One thing I want to explain, just in case we have any beginners here, you have reference planes in the family environment and you have geometry. Geometry is attached to the reference planes, um, not the other way around. So whenever we make something stretch in Revit, you know, whenever you see a family be smart and it's parametric, What's really happening is that the reference planes are expanding or contracting and then the geometry attached to that follows it as well. So in order to create the lines around our family, we're going to have to create uh, more reference planes. So I'm just going to click on, if we go to create and then we go to reference plane here, I can just draw this. Equally so, I could have just clicked on one of these reference planes and hit create similar. Don't worry about the dimension and make them too perfect. We're going to fix that in a second. Now what I want to do is I want to add a dimension for my circulation zone. So it's constraining all this, um, all these reference planes here. So what we need to do is we need to go to this align dimension tool on top, click on one reference plane to the other one. There we go. And then same for around the bed. So there to there and there to there. I'm just gonna line this. If you've noticed that I haven't actually put a reference plane up top here, I'm not gonna create a circulation zone. I'm always gonna assume that this bed is against the wall. So yeah, that's why I'm not gonna add a reference plane there. One thing to note here is that we need to create a parameter and I want you to keep in mind the value here that this is 416.93. So if I click on this dimension here and I hit create parameter, if I call it something simple that we know, say something like circulation zone and I hit okay, you can see that the circulation zone has taken the default value of the first thing that I was inputted into it, right? So in this case, it was the dimension. Now, if I want to make this um, dimension the same as this circulation zone, all I have to do is I have to click on this dimension, go to label and click circulation zone. And same thing for the one as before. So if I get circulation zone here, and now if I want to make this expand, so as in my example before, I wanted it to be something like 700. If I hit 700, you can see the reference planes expand to it. Great. Now all we have to do is um, put a line so it's attached to the reference planes. And then yeah, then we have a good start for our family. So if I go to my annotate um, tab and go to symbolic line, I'm going to click on this line here that says pick lines. Click on that one and lock it. Same here, lock it there. Same here, lock it there. And now I'm going to use the top of the bed here as my other reference plane. So I'm just going to click there, lock it. There we go. I'm going to press TR on my keyboard for the trim tool. TR. Trim these lines together there and there, there and there, there and there. And if you've done this correctly, if you hover over one of the symbolic lines here and you press tab, you should see that it forms a closed loop. So square in this example, and that's how you know that your lines are all connected how we want them to be. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna load this into project for now. There we go, load it into project one. I'm gonna hit override. And here you go, we can see we've got this line here that's actually adapted to our family. So if I go to twin, it's gonna constrain it because it's attached to the edge of the bed through the reference planes. If I wanna make this um, reference plane here, if I want to make the circulation zone here 500, there you can see it updates. Now I want to be able to control the line style of the circulation zone, so it's different from the bed. Currently right now, if I go to VG or VV on my keyboard, which is the visibility graphics for the view, if I go down to furniture, 
if I expand furniture here, you can see that this is we don't have the circulation zone from the example that I've shown you before. If I want to override the circulation zone, I'm actually going to have to override the whole graphics for the bed. So if I go here and I hit apply, there you go. We want something separate. So this is how we're going to do it. We're going to go back into the family environment. I'm just going to hit edit family. And now what I want to do is, if you click on one of these lines, you can see up here, it says the subcategory for this line is set to furniture. We have furniture and hidden lines and invisible lines. Ideally, we want to create something called circulation zone so that we know what we're referencing in our project and just create a dedicated line style towards it, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to manage, I'm going to go to object styles, and then over here under modify new subcategories, I'm going to click new. I'm going to add something called circulation zone here. And one thing to note that is that because this is a furniture family, the subcategory of it has to be a furniture, um, respective if you used another family or not. So we're just going to hit circulation zone. And over here, I can choose what pattern I want by default for the family. So here, let's just do something like dash or actually let's do something like dot two mil. And I want the line color to be, let's do gray, a bit of a dark gray. If I OK now, OK. And now, just because we've created it doesn't mean it's going to work. We need to assign these lines to be that line style. So I'm going to click on this line here. I can either click on it one line and then do furniture to circulation zone or how I said before, if you hover over one line, press tab, we select all the subcategory, we can override all of them to be part of circulation zone. Now, if I load this into my project and I hit override the existing version, there we go. You can see that it's actually taken the line style here from our family. And if I go to VG or VV on my keyboard again for the visibility graphics on the view, and I go down to furniture, you can see we have a new um, object style made. Oh, no, you can see that we have a new line style made, which is the circulation zone. And over here, um, we can choose what we want the graphics to be. So here, if I want the color to be back to black, override it in the project, hit apply. There we go. Same thing for a different line style. Say if I make the pattern a line line, there we go. It will change and we can turn it off. Great. So let's add this to another family because this is going to be another example here. So what I'm going to do for this one is I'm going to go to insert, load Autodesk family, and I'm actually going to choose a chair. I'm going to do a circular spinning chair in this example. So let's choose this family. And I'm going to go to architecture, component, place that chair here. And I believe by default, we already have a desk loaded in our project. So I'm just going to choose this one here. Place it against the wall. And now we want a um, circulation zone around this one. Sorry, let me just turn on the previous one. Here we go. Now we want a circulation zone or a mark around the chair, just so there's a circumference there, just so um, we're making sure that the person has enough space when they're spinning on the chair. So for this one, let's go to edit family. Okay, so when we're in this family, I just want to show you something. I'm not going to make it parametric at the start. So let's go to the reference level for the floor plan here. And what I want to do is I want to go to my annotate uh, tab again, go to symbolic line, circle, and I'm just going to drag this up top. Let's not make it parametric for now. If I load this into my project and I load it into project one and I hit overwrite, here you can see that our circulation zone is going on top of the desk. It would even go on top of the bed. But if you notice something, the chair is underneath the desk, but the symbolic line is on top. This is because the symbolic line is a 2D element. By default in Revit, 2D elements will always sit on top. If you imagine it like on Photoshop, this 2D element will always be on the highest layer. So whatever, whatever we draw, so in this case, the circle is going to cover and show on top of all of our other drawings. So in this case, we're going to need to have a 3D line because you're not really going to draw a, um, a circulation zone that only stops at one point. This chair can rotate in, however, in whatever direction it wants, it's 360. So in this case, a model line works best. So if I go here and I go edit family, and then if I delete this line and I do the same thing, but I want to go to create this time and go model line. As you can see, this is a line that exists in 3D space. If I hit this one and I hit circle, do the same thing again. If I load this into my project and I hit project one, override, you can see that the circulation zone here is actually, it's 3D, it will sit underneath the desk and same thing underneath the bed, right? This is what we want. One thing to note here is, and I'm just going to delete the walls. If I go here, just for now, because this is 2D, this is only seen in this view, right? The floor plan view that we drew on. If I go to a 3D view now, you can see that the circulation zone for the bed isn't visible there, but for the chair, the circulation zone, which was a 3D model line, is drawn around it and it's visible in 3D. Ideally, you want to keep everything a symbolic line whenever you're doing this, unless you need to see it in 3D, just because this can make the family 
heavier and if you have loads of instances of this chair in your project you're adding a lot of geometry that you might not need to see and it actually might clash with a few of your other drawings um, so yeah it's just an additional step or just additional thing to check and one thing to note here is that the circle is actually not aligned to the bottom of the chair right it's not aligned to the level it's actually aligned to the seat and I'm going to show you why how, how to fix this right now and also how we can make this circle parametric so if we go back to the family editor if I go here I'm just going to move the circle what I want to hit, what I want to click is click on the circle and I want to hit center mark visible. There we go. Now we've got the center of the circle. So now we can align this to the middle of the chair, right? I'm just going to press AL on my keyboard for the align tool. Click on this reference plane and the center mark here. I'm going to constrain it by hitting this lock icon. Same thing here for this reference plane. Click on that one, center mark visible and lock it. So now this, cent so now this circle is constrained to the center of the reference planes, which is the center of our chair. Now what I want to do is I want to click on this circle. As you can see here, we've got this dimension and we want to create a um, parameter in order to flex our circle, the, circum the circumference of it, or in this case, the radius. So what we can do is whenever Revit gives us something like this, we can always make use of it. So if I see this, see this icon here, it says make this temporary dimension permanent. If I click on it, you can see it's made a dimension for us right from the center of the circle to the, um, to the circumference. So we've got the radius. Now, if I click on this and I hit create parameter, just like before, and if we do something like circulation zone and I hit okay, there we go. Now what I want to do is I want to, let's just quickly edit this. Let's just make it 600. There we go. Okay. And now what we want to do is we want to fix the circle so that it's actually at the bottom of the um, chair right now. I'm just going to make the scale smaller just so we don't want that annotation to be that big. There we go. So as we can see here, this circle isn't aligned to the floor. If I go to one of my elevation views in the family, we can see that the circle here is aligned to this reference plane, right? We ideally want it to go to the floor. If I click on the circle here and I go to edit work plane, we can see that the reference plane it will set to will see, we want it to be on level reference level. Remember, because this is a 3D line, it can change in elevation where it's um, drawn. 2D lines will just always sit on top but 3D, because it exists on 3D space, you can choose what reference plane you want to align it at or what height you want it to align it at as well. So if I go back to my project here and I go load into project one, override, override, there we go. We can see that this circle now sits on the correct level, right? It sits at the bottom of the level. Now what we want to do is, is if we go to the family again, what I want to do is I want to create the same object style or the same line style as before. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go to the manage tab, object styles, create new and I want to name this the same thing that I na uh, named it before which is circulation zone keep the exact same spelling all right I hit okay one thing to note is that I'm not going to override the line pattern here because I want to show you guys something so if I hit um, leave it as solid and black there we go and one thing to note is that let's just click on the circle remember even though this is a model line we can still choose what subcategory we want the line style to be so I'm going to do circulation zone again there we go if I load this into my project project one override in this view here, as you can see, it's overridden our line style as well. If I go to my floor plan here, here we go, VV, furniture. Why, we can see that it's got the same line style as our previous furniture. Why has this happened? If I go to VV and I go to furniture again, if I get rid of the override that we have here, so if I make this clear overrides and hit okay, okay. You can see that our line style hasn't updated how we expected it to. And the reason for this is because when we created our first family here, which is this bed, and I um, set the line style here to be, if I went manage object styles again, I loaded in this setting into the project because this didn't, because this circulation zone didn't exist in my project environment. When I've created this setting here, dot uh, to be dot two mil and this gray color, when I loaded this into the project environment, I've set the default standard for that line, right? It's not gonna be a solid black line that's one mil thick or line projection that's one I've actually overridden what I want the default settings to be so if I go back into my project environment here if I go to manage and I go to manage object styles and if I go to furniture here object styles for those of you that don't know is what a default um, is what the default um, graphics would look like without any graphic overrides so as you can see here most of the stuff in Revit is set to be a projection of one and it have different colors but it's also a solid black line and it's black by default, because I actually made that, because I made the circulation zone line style in another family and I edited the graphics there, when I load it here, 
this is also the default settings for every view without it being overridden. So if I went here and I made this black and I made this solid, just like it's any other line, and I go here and I hit OK, this is what it's going to look like. So if I go back to my 3D view, one that doesn't have a graphic override on it, so if I go VV and I go to furniture, as you can see here, circulation zones, we have no overrides here. It's a solid black line. If I went back to object styles and I went to furniture, and if I went to furniture and I went to circulation zone, if I want it to be red by default in all views, if I hit red here, and if I wanted it to be um, dashed as well, if I hit OK, then you can see in this 3D view, it would also appear that way, and same in the plan view. This is one thing I want you guys to know, that if we have a, if we, these two families are obviously different, they're different families, but because we have the same um, lines that are made in them, and we call it the exact same thing, circulation zone, we can now control them through one thing in our project environment, so it's really useful. If I went here and I went to edit family, and if I went uh, to this object style, and if I went object, object styles, and I made this one, if we rename it circulation zone two, for example, if I loaded this into my project, um, and one thing to note here, just as an example, if I went to object styles, this is default solid black, right? Circulation two doesn't exist in our project environment. If I load this into my project and I hit project one, override, why has this changed? Because this is line style circulation zone two. If I go to manage object styles and I go to furniture again, here we go. Circulation zone two now exists and it's the default thing what we've created in the family. These are now two independent things I want to control. I don't really want that, so I'm going to go back before I load it in the family and I control it the same way. So yeah, this is a really easy way for us to control um, circulation zones within our families. It's going to be really useful whenever you do stuff such as, um, you know, draw, make some calculations on your GAs, make sure you're hitting the minimum circulation zones when you're designing a space, make sure they're nice and spacious. Um, and yeah, if we want to turn it off for our clean drawings, all we have to do is go VV or VG on our keyboard for the visibility graphics of the view, go to furniture, and over here, let's just turn off circulation zone. Remember, this one's a 2D line, this one's a 3D line, and it still applies. By default, if I want to choose the circulation zone, why I want the graphic to be everywhere in the entire project, I'd have to go to Manage, Object Styles, and set it there. But if I want to choose whether it's on or off for a specific view, or control the graphics for a specific view, I'd have to control that through the views, um, visibility graphics for that view. So if I go here, Furniture, and let's go to circulation zone again. Let's say I want this to be pink. There we go. Okay, apply. It's now pink on my view. I do hope you find. I do hope you guys found this video helpful. Um, it's something that firms use quite a lot, especially when you have to design apartments or whatever to specific regs. I don't see a lot of students do this. Uh, when I was a student, for example, when I went here and I went to furniture, I just turned off this circulation zone. I used to see a lot of people. I mean, I done this myself. For example, I used to go to model line. I used to draw the circulation zone like this. Ugh, let's pretend that was. Pretend I could actually draw that correct first. If I went here, architecture model line. Just, oh wow. Delete. Ah, it's because the reference plane's there. It's because I'm selecting it, even though it's off. There we go. Annotate. If I went to architecture model line, this is how I used to do it as a student, and it wasn't correct. I used to do something like this. Create a group. Obviously, like create a group. There we go. And then whenever I was drawing my bed or placing it against the wall, I'd use this. And then whenever I didn't need it, I'd then edit the group and delete the lines. This isn't obviously the correct way to do it. And um, the way I've shown you means it's going to be there in the family by default. And we can turn it on or off for our views, which is really useful, uh, depending on, especially depending on the scale of the views that you have. So yeah, I do hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, please leave a like. It does help me a lot. Take care, guys. Cheers.